Hey guys, welcome. This is a general reading for the Collective of Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How are you? Welcome, Cross Watchers. And if you're brand new to the channel, I'm glad you found me. Do feel free to come into the comments, say hi, and let me know where you're tuning in from. I will make my way back through later on and give you a proper welcome in the comments. So I'm going to pull from Divine Master's Oracle just to activate the reading. So let's see what Divine Master is coming through today for you. You have Lakshmi and Ganesh. I love that prosperity vibration. You're attracting health, wealth, and happiness. Well, holla freaking luya. <laughs> Especially during eclipse season. I love this for you. Let's take it. Um, I love Lakshmi and Ganesh. They're a powerful duo. Prosperity vibration. May it be so and so it is. Okay. So this is a different spread, both this side and the extended, different spreads. Um, and the whole point is, since we, slippery deck, since we um, are in eclipse season and we came through the full moon in Pisces with a lunar eclipse associated with the south node, which is the past, and eclipse, uh, full moons are about release, and we're heading to a new moon where we're setting intentions in Libra. So very much about relationships, Venus ruled, um, and it'll be a solar eclipse, north node facing toward the future. I thought it would be good to do a spread um, that focuses on you know lessons that we're wrapping up, baggage that we're carrying unnecessarily, what we need to release, what's blocking us, what do we need to forgive, etc. So I'm just going to pull it and um, walk you through it and then we'll grab some clarifiers. Okay. Here we go. Hmm. Ooh. So the important lesson from past relationships or within this connection that you're here to watch about, and remember, even if you're a cross watcher for a Cancerian, this could be meant for you. Um, when I'm seeing the Ace of Wands as a lesson, it could about be more like a failure to launch, right? Opportunities that aren't picked up. Because with the Ace of Wands, the Aces are always gifts from spirit, but the point is it has to be, it's like a handoff of a baton. It has to be taken. So missed opportunities perhaps, or failures to launch in terms of passion or, um, yeah, the motivation, the inspiration, you get it. Um, and the baggage that you're potentially carrying is you know, that there was no cooperation, no co-creation. So that leads me to believe that the lesson is, is that it, you know, not really the timing not being right, or maybe you more interested in someone that wasn't as on board with you, mm, possibly. And that seems to be a theme um, that like a thread I'm pulling through most of these readings so far. So this can also be um, like friendship zoning, right? A little bit of baggage where you felt more passion, there was, or interest, chemistry, whatever you want to call it, failure to go any further than friends, friends with benefits, whatever. So yeah, that's what I'm going with here, Cancer. So what, what do you need to release from this? Um, well, with, we, with the Empress, there is this openness and receptivity about her, sure, and this is divine feminine energy, but I think it's about how to find your way to nurturing yourself a little more and release how you put the other person first. And I know that that probably sounds counterintuitive to you, Cancer, especially if you're here as the Cancerian, because you're the nurturing type. So there's something that you have to release here where you're back burnering your own needs um, and maybe giving, 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 and therefore coming up short and, and um, not receiving the cooperation or the co-creative energies 
from the people that you're choosing as partners. If that's speaking to you, okay, that's, that's part of the aspect of the Empress that needs to be released. So I'm not saying release your inner divine feminine. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying um, that somehow, some way, there's an aspect where, you know, um, Cancerian energy, let's just say, can be, um, she is the emp the queen of cups is Cancerian energy, the empath of the tarot. And think of empathy. Sometimes we can over empathize to the point where we get lost in it. There's enmeshment where we become overly enmeshed. So if you are following, if you're picking up what I'm laying down here, what I'm trying to say is release that part of you that tends to over give and over nurture. Because there's a block for you here, my friends, what's blocking you either within this connection or from finding new love is it ends up where you get hurt. Yeah, right? The pain of, of giving, 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 the pain of feeling the connection and the passion or the chemistry, but then it doesn't go anywhere because it's not being, you know, someone isn't playing their part. Um, and then that residual pain, there's like a layering effect. Um, and that wound doesn't heal. So that scar is pretty gnarly and it, it blocks anything from coming through the heart chakra. So keep that in mind that this, this three of swords isn't just a one-time kind of, um, of, a, of a heartbreak. It's a layering effect. Because it's kind of going to the core of who you are, part of your nature. We're going deep. I told you we're going deep. <laughs> Depending on the time of day, you might need, you know, uh, an adult beverage. Okay. So what do you need to forgive? This Knight of Pentacles is doing a lot of heavy lifting here because she's kind of okay on her own. She is a single person of the tarot. And so in some cases we could say, you know, always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Um, but we also look at her and we say, you know, I kind of admire her. She's, she's got it together. She's okay. She's got all her creature comfort. She's glorious. She's glamorous. She's beautiful. She can, she's got the power, the law of attraction working for her. Girl's got some game. And yet, you know, there's a part of us that tends to focus on, well, but she's single. She's alone. She's unattached. She's right. So we have to forgive that part of ourselves that sees the flaw instead of all that we've got working for us. Mm -hmm. So see the beauty, see the power, see what you have that other people admire. Think about what people come to you for. What do they count on you for? What do they admire about you? You know, start tuning into the compliments that are paid to you. And forgive yourself for not seeing that in yourself. Perfect card. I, I wish every sign got this card in the forgiveness position. You know, because it's not about, oh, I'm unattached or I'm single or I'm not getting any cooperation here and I give, give, give and nothing comes back and that hurts like hell. Um, because then you start building fortresses around your heart and it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Okay, following. All right, so in the self-love, what do you need to work on for your self-love? I think, you, you know, these are the fears and insecurities that kind of keep us focused on what we are not enough of. That keep us focused on our shortcomings, focused on our insecurities. So I do think, um, look, your last two readings, I'm pretty sure, because we had your bonus reading, thanks again for you know, being so supportive of my work here on the channel. So thanks for that. If you missed it, it was just a, you know four or five days ago, bonus reading for cancer. And the reading before that, and even the one before that, I'm pretty sure. There's been a lot of focus in the cancer readings on fear. It's been in the title a couple times, and here it is for your self-care card. So make no mistake, I'm plugging into your energies. Um, there's a fear quotient here 
And so for your self-love, the fears are coming from, the calls coming from inside the house, guys. It's coming from a lack of self-confidence and self-assurance and, you know, being okay with your independence and autonomy um, and not being the self-critic and not seeing your flaws instead of your beauty and all that everyone else admires about you right instead being your you know so critical about any little perceived flaw like who do you think you are a virgo <laughs> i say that because i'm a virgo like no 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 i corner that market <laughs> okay so now that we have the plot let's go ahead and fill in the details ace of wands i love you ace of wands <laughs> Yes, mm, right. So you're patient around it. This, this is the lesson, remember? What's the lesson from past relationships or within this relationship? Um, you know, temperance, a lot of, lot of patience and giving space and right, going with the flow and sort of feeling the passion and the chemistry and this is new or this feels good and I'm just waiting for it to kind of be returned. Yeah, no. Painful endings. No real wish fulfillment. And you know where it's coming from? Complacency. Because you're all ready to go, but someone isn't receiving. Someone isn't picking up what you're laying down. And so on some level, there may be a pattern and it may be across past relationships or it may just be an important lesson right now. And the nine of cups being that it's, you know, under the deck can be just within you internally and in your unconscious awareness, but it can also be something that plays out behind the scenes. The cards from the bottom of the deck are what we can't see. So it feels to me like there could be some complacency that's a part of the other people um, that have been in your life because the baggage is I can get no damn cooperation. I'm, there's, there's no, no co-creative energies here. Um, and so nothing really kind of pops off. Nothing gets going. I'm patient. I give it time and I just take 10 swords to the back. I don't understand this. There you are. Queen of Cups. Wide open heart, being sensitive, caring, compassion, empathetic. Can't even make it up, guys. Ready for, yes, ready for your king of cups. But the baggage is, and it's, this is now Aries, Taurus, uh, Gemini. This is the fourth reading and I'm saying the same thing in the same spot. What I want does not want me not on the same page, backs to each other, all this potential failure to launch, no cooperation. So the baggage you're carrying, please note, this is a specific spread. So this would not be the interpretation that I would give if it was any other spread and the position of the card was different. The position of this card is about the baggage you're carrying from the lesson you keep learning in intimate relationships, partnerships, or within this connection that you're here to watch about. Is there's all this potential and things should be getting going and there's no cooperation. We're not on the same page here. And that's heavy baggage because it's the lesson and then it just keeps compounding. Like I said, there's a layering effect to this three of swords which is the block, because now it's going to block you. Because who wants to keep going through this? So your release, Empress. Wow. Yeah. Release the head games. Um, you know, I said the Empress is giving, 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 and so you want to feed yourself, nurture yourself. I 
I want to also say, like, there's a recognition that you're the gift. The aces are gifts from spirit. You're the gift. And we have something very cool, aloof, distant. I'm, I'm feeling these two are like the same person. Because um, a king of cups can be about emotional unavailability, uh, you know, especially because this is from the bottom of the deck. So there's an awareness of something is not cooperating here. And from the bottom of the deck this time, five of swords. Five of swords under that king of swords. It's not great. It's kind of cruel. It can be gaslighty. It can be game playing, manipulative. You know, the kind of thing that says, you know, when you tell them, well, you, you know, when you said such and such and, you know, that hurt my feelings, I didn't say that. I, I never said that. Don't put words in my mouth. You know, that kind of a sensation where you're like, am I losing my mind? That, that's the energy here. Hmm. It can be toxicity. It can be zero sum game. Kind of like if if I can't win, ain't nobody gonna win. Kind of a thing. So I'm just feeling like if you feel that sense of I keep getting <laughs> ten swords thrown at my back out of nowhere. This is that energy. It's a lack of emotional availability. It's coolness. It's distant. It feels um, sabotage -y. Um Just I just want to go with sort of, there's an intentionality with the Five of Swords that bothers me more than even the Seven of Swords. Right? The Seven of Swords can sometimes just be avoidant, and sometimes people do really stupid things when they're trying to, you know, escape a situation that they don't want to deal with. That's human nature. This, this feels more intentional. So you want to release, like you want to see yourself as the gift and you want to stop feeding this, right? Nurturer here, the Empress. You're the gift. Stop feeding something that isn't feeding you back. Release it. Release the coldness. Release the cruelty. That's what you need to release and let go of. And, and whether it's happening in this relationship that you're here to watch about or not, you need to release it from past relationships as well. In other words, you're releasing the construct that that is ever going to be acceptable to you again. Ooh. So what's blocking you from either finding the path to love, a powerful love in this connection, or new love, should that be what is on your menu, <laughs> yeah, and again, as I've said to others here, this four of pentacles is the hardened heart, right, the guarded heart, and I don't, and I want to be clear what I'm talking about, a, you know, a guarded heart. Being guarded is that you're closing your heart chakra, which is a clear block. Nobody can find their way into that. This isn't about, you know, being more protective of and discerning about who gets access. That's not what this card is about. So you're blocking the path to any potential suitor who might be commitment material. Mm -hmm. Because the wall goes a little higher every time. It makes, it makes you unapproachable, um, makes it difficult for you to even see potential love coming at you an offer from someone that is sincere, that's trying to be vulnerable. It 
So the pain and the layering on of said pain from this kind of shit that happens over and over and over again. And you certainly can't be blamed for being a kind, compassionate, caring, giving person. What I'm saying is <laughs> we can <laughs> dial that back a notch, right? And try a new level of, of kindness, caring, compassion, nurturing, right? We can kind of try to tweak that a bit. so that it, it sort of shifts a bit and we give another person an opportunity to demonstrate their capacity to give in return. Forgive, what do you need to forgive? Oh, wow. So not just um, your own Focus on being on your own, being alone, like the less desirable parts of the Nine of Pentacles. But the world is the, you know, the lessons. And the cyclical, this is Saturn, right? So it's about lessons being learned and often the hard way. And it's an endings and new beginnings card, but in order to get to the new beginning, we kind of got to process the ending. And there is the Empress, right? And so there is here a letting go, maybe of a love, maybe of someone that you thought had your back and they don't, they didn't, they don't. And maybe that's where you need to forgive yourself. There's the forgiveness card. Because we got Saturn and we got Pluto. And Pluto is the lord of the underworld, but also the planet of transformation. Saturn is the great teacher and the lord of karma. So we've got powerful energies here saying, lesson learned, let yourself off the hook. You are the divine feminine, and now we want you to close out that cycle. So you can begin anew and arise from the ashes like the phoenix into a whole new you, whole new chapter. Can't do it from here, though. So you have to find forgiveness for yourself. Close out that chapter. You've got to do it. You've got to forgive and you got to let go of something that doesn't have the capacity to love you in the way that you love them or didn't have the capacity. Played games with your heart. Self-love. <laughs> yep. Yeah. What do you need to work on? Well, it's like the fears thing. You're, you're living in fear of some finality. And the two cards, the other two cards, we have the two of pentacles and we have the five of cups from the bottom of the deck. So the five of cups from the bottom of the deck is the past. Stakes of the past, regrets of the past, sorrow, despair, things that slip through our fingers. And that two of pentacles to me is that I'm kind of on the fence here. I, I don't know. It's this fear of letting go. This fear of, is it really, a, is it really done? Is it really over? So I'm feeling like your, your self-love is working on this indecision. Like, do things really need to come full bore crashing down around you? 
before you can consciously decide that something isn't good for you, that something does not serve you. I say you're really needing to work on the indecision so that you don't have to keep having the regrets. So things don't have to become so destructive that, that it takes you another layer the sandwich of pain <laughs> and another brick upon your heart. So the fear is what's keeping you in indecision, but then there's the self-fulfilling prophecy I talked about. You kind of are creating this vicious cycle. Mm -hmm. Forgive your shortcomings, close out the cycle and the self-love is working on loving those flaws and shortcomings and loving yourself enough to make a decision when you are very clear that something is not serving your best interests. And that mantra goes a little something like, I don't need 10 swords in the back when I can see five coming right at me. Put it on a sticky note, put it on your bathroom mirror, right? On the refrigerator, I don't need 10 swords in the back when I can see five coming at me. Really? Okay, so that's this part of the reading, and um, I think we have what you're going to work through from, well, we're kind of halfway through till now, from now until, I think it's October 2nd for the new moon in Libra, and I am going to take this to the extended, and then we're going to look at the relationship dynamics, your energy and your person's energy. Um, both of your blocks within your relationship. This was a different block that I was exploring. Um, your actual connection dynamics, uh, divine guidance for you, and the potential outcome going forward. So the links to that are in the description box below. There are a couple different ways you can get to the extended. Please review them before you press buy. Um, and if this has been something that has spoken to you, been helpful to you, insightful for you, and you have not yet done so, please do subscribe below so that I can stay here and continue to bring you these messages. Um, that's my favorite thing to do. And that is our energetic exchange. So do subscribe. Thank you so much. I'm headed over to the extended now and, um, bye. See you there.